Welcome to the program, Ben. It's great to have you. Thanks, Simon. Good to be, I can't good to believe be back. I can't believe it's been three years since uh, since we first recorded and we we're just joking about how technology has changed in that time. But I'm looking forward to hearing about what's been going on in those three years. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's uh, been, uh, feels like uh, probably four or five or six years. Well, I think it's, we've, we've aged probably that much, haven't we, with all of the changes? Yeah, absolutely. But when we first chatted, um, you were the treasurer um, and head of financial reporting at Pacific National. Over yep. those three years, how have things changed? Where are you now? Yeah, so I, look, I stayed in that role for just over three years. And in the last six months, I've taken on the role of head of finance for operations. It was an opportunity for me to step out from the both the accounting and treasury side, which I mixed for the, the best part of the last decade, and really get into the heart of the business and work with the operations function. For us at, at Pacific National, that's um, you know the heart and soul of what, what's um, going on. It's, it's three plus thousand of our three and a half thousand employees supporting um, the chief operating officer and their lead team and, and working with, uh, with what I'd describe as the business to make sure that from a cost perspective, we've, uh, we've really got um, the organization moving in the right direction, making sure we've got a lot of efficiency. It's not necessarily always about cost out. It's actually about making sure you've got the right efficient labor, you've got the right efficient uh, rolling stock and assets and that they are reliable. And that's, um, for us, probably the most fundamental thing is making sure that our assets are reliable. So I get involved in a lot of things, um, particularly on the asset side, but equally with, um, with our day-to-day -day operations. And that's um, been a welcome change for me. It's been a good opportunity to do something a little bit different and makes me more well-rounded as I um, hopefully progress towards a, a CFO path in the future. So Ben, any particular highlights or things that are, you know worth listening? Uh, sorry, listing out for the for the uh, listeners around what you've been doing over those three years. Yeah, look, I think we've uh, we've achieved a lot as a team. It's been um, we're coming on board. We're very very fresh as a as a team. Actually, we we're almost a complete change when um, just after I started in the treasury function, and we've been able to take the um, take the, the refinancing strategy and probably change it uh, 180 degrees. We've, we successfully did bond in the, in the reg S dollar market. We've had um, a couple of successful AMTN issuance. We've reshaped the, the bank debt um, completely. And then really um, culminating in stuff that we did last year with, with COVID and looked at putting a new facility in place to give us some longevity in our, in our bank uh, lines. We also paused a bond transaction, so that not ideal at the time, but was clearly the right decision to do. We were able to, with the with the bank line extension, get what was not bad pricing at the at the time, but gave us the longevity to know that we had uh, cover for a refinancing of a bond that was maturing um, six months after we did that refi, which probably only, only, only about four months actually after we did that refi. So that helped us very much from a stability perspective and was, was good news from a rating agency perspective. And I must say we retained the bank group quite substantially through that, uh, through that process. So it was, it was good to see that we were well supported. And then I, I guess, um, first and foremost, the move to working from home as a team, I think we felt that, um, that it was going to be challenging, but actually the, the team worked incredibly well together in a, what was a very stressful time. We had to be mindful of cash that was coming in the door. We had to be working through modeling situations and outcomes that could have transpired for the business like we'd never done before and we were all able to do that remotely and working collaboratively as, as not just a treasury team as a full finance team so i was very proud of the collective finance team effort at, at pacific national so you mentioned there obviously COVID 19 did really change a lot of things um, and some of the challenges there has that changed the way that treasury's role in the organization is perceived 
I think maybe for for some individuals, I think that the, we had a very supportive CFO and, and actually had a change of CFO um, in the middle of last year as well. And, and CFO is certainly very supportive of what's going on in Treasury. So I think from that perspective, almost no change, but the, the focus of the CFO um, certainly moved to what was happening with cash, what was happening um, for in, in the treasury space, did we have the longevity in our, in our lines? Were we able to um, continue, meet our refinancing needs? Those Just those nuanced changes in the way that the CFO operated. But I think for the, for the rest of the business and, and at board and shareholder level, the, the heightened interest of what was going on in treasury was, was certainly noticeable. Um, but we as a team were right on top of everything. And actually, you know, we were able to pivot from what was going to be a bond transaction in, in March to not doing a bond transaction to actually doing a bank transaction, maintaining um, the relationships with all our, our bank line, our bank customers, and um, and and we moved on um, without really too much stress at all. Obviously, Treasury has coped pretty well with the remote and the work from home. Well, any anything to note, sort of in terms of how you manage that process and, and the the outcomes. As an organisation, I think, and as a lead team of a head office function, we we navigated back to the office uh, reasonably quickly. So I think from about the middle of June last year, I, I probably spent four days a week in the, in the office as a minimum. A, as a team, the team probably spent a couple of days a week in the office through mo most of last year. And I think we're finding a balance where it's that two to three days in in the office, pro, I, I think three to four is probably the balance going forward. You know, we're still in obviously a COVID situation as we're doing this interview today. I'm standing in a makeshift office in uh, in one of the bedrooms in in my uh, in my house, but I think the um, the ability to to strengthen relationships and have those ad hoc conversations that do come with being in the office. There's certainly a role to play for the office, but no one's going back to that lifestyle of, of five days a week in the office. Um, we've all demonstrated that we can work remotely. We can save some travel time and, and still get the outcomes for the organization. And so I think there's one to two days a week at, at home for most people um, on a, on a semi-regular basis um, in the future. And obviously the hiring process, uh, having to do that remote over COVID changed a lot. Did, did you have to hire or go through that process? I didn't specifically, but the, the team have done so post me uh, moving on. Obviously um, the team needed to replace myself. I was lucky that I had a really good quality team. So our assistant treasurer, Charles Barlin, stepped up to be head of treasury, which was really pleasing to see. It's always good when you're... Um, when you see internal promotions, but I think it's even better when you're actually one of the leaders that actually sees uh, someone who's working for you get that internal promotion. So really good to see Charles step up into the head of treasury role and, and uh, our previous senior treasury analyst, David Crystal has moved up into a, the assistant treasurer role. And that was also really, really pleasing to see. He's a great individual and, and doing some great stuff for the team. And they've, they've, been a seamless transition used to describe our function really as you know we're a team of three people but I was a two and a quarter treasury operation just because of the breadth of role that I previously had with my financial controller looking after all the external reporting the shared services insurance and treasury I probably only felt like I could de dedicate a quarter of my time to treasury and Charles has had to reshape that and so the, they are now probably they are now I think a, a two point seven operation, and they've recruited a, a treasury analyst to work in the, the team, and they've done that, and uh, and she has come into the organisation and is working uh, working very well, and and I think also mixing again that work office based environment with uh, with the working from home, and and it's um, happened uh, pretty seamlessly. Do you think that will have a lasting impact on the way you think about recruitment moving forward? I think it was a, it was a good one to actually say um, we actually uh, grabbed someone who's effectively working a, a 0.7, but that 0.7 is uh, largely through the middle of the day. So you actually get someone who's 
able to um, mix and balance their lifestyle around what, what's happening at home. And I think that is uh, the future of employment where you can actually balance uh, when people are working with the needs of the organisation and, and the needs of the individual. So I think I'd like to see that type of uh, environment growing. All right, Ben, I think it's one of those funny things that you're, you're like the majority of people now in that everyone is wanting to see exactly that. The interesting thing that we're seeing is businesses haven't really evolved yet. And I don't know whether it's, you know, old school CFOs, but the number of roles that are being recruited where it's five days a week or, you know, not much flexibility at all is astounding given what's happened over the last 18 months. So I'm really intrigued to see how that plays out because I think, those businesses that don't do what you've done and go down that path are really going to struggle to attract talent. So time will tell. The other thing I wanted to just ask you, uh, Ben, is networking is obviously um, a, a pretty important part of people's career development, but it's been very challenged during that lockdown. What's been your approach to networking over that time or have you just parked it? Yeah, I have actually, um, I've tried to do it a little bit. I think having been an early adopter to, to working back in the office, we were also early adopters to having meetings with banks and, and investors and, and actually, you know, the, the odd lunch, which was, uh, which was a nice welcome change, six months uh, between, between drinks, so to speak. But I must say it's been a huge reduction in the amount of networking relative to what we were doing um, pre I think I've tried to stay abreast of a lot of changes, um, whether that be from an accounting or treasury perspective and attending various webinars and the like, but it's certainly not the, the type of networking that we were doing previously. So, so I think while we've moved on in a lot of respects and, and actually developed a new working environment, I think the uh, I think networking is still a, a question mark for me about how that continues into the future. Maybe it's a, a number of smaller engagements that you can have with people i think that the idea of big functions is probably off the off the radar for them for the moment but we'll, we'll see it it'll be um and i think a lot of organizations have kind of had a bit of a freeze on those things as well so maybe we're not maybe it's unfair to to say this is the future of networking i think you need to have a little bit of those reins released so that people can start to do things but i don't know exactly what that looks like going forward yeah, but I find it quite interesting, Ben, because, you know, with conferences all cancelled and Zoom becoming the norm, you know, I don't get a lot of value out of doing things virtually because my world is all about networking and you can't actually just have a chat with someone on the side. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see how that goes as well, because I think that's the one piece for me that I haven't really seen anyone do particularly well. And it's really yeah. something that physically being in a, in a room with someone is what needs to be. I mean, were you able to get anything, uh, any value virtually from, from the, the things that you tried? Oh, I don't, I don't think not, not like you, you can on, on an in-person basis. I, I think that's certainly known and understood. And, and it, I even find it from a work perspective, the, the virtual world is fine. I think with relations that relationships that you have already built up, and you can sustain those for a period of time. But I must say my engagements in the office are certainly different to those that I, that I have virtually. So I do see the benefit of being in the office on a, on a pretty regular basis. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think, and, and even from a treasury perspective, just the, the fireside chats when you find out something that's going on makes a difference as well, doesn't it? Rather than just trying to do it on a formal meeting basis. Oh, def definitely. Um, so we've got to work it out. If you can find the uh, the person that has worked it out the best, uh, let me know. Oh, absolutely. That, that's, I think it's the missing link at the moment, Ben. I don't think anyone's nailed that just yet. So it'll be intriguing to see whether technology can help with it or, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see. But yeah, thank you very much for your time. Wanna, yeah, people don't want to uh, continue in this non-networking world, if we call it that, for uh, for too long. So I think people will start to work it out in the next 12 months. And it's funny, Ben, like people like me that, that have, you know, that's, that's pretty much what you've done for the last 25 years. It's mentally been really challenging to even get through that just because it's been such a part of the fabric of what we've done. So, yeah, I think everyone's cra craving for it to come back to, to just catch up with people again. Yeah. Well, Ben, thank you very much for your time. It's always great to chat. 
No, uh, very much appreciated. And uh, maybe we can do it in another three years. Well, hopefully we can catch up for a beer before then. Yeah, sounds good, Simon.